Oh, John, John the disciple that Jesus loved. <laughs> oh, dear. Didn't he have a lot of audacity? I'm the one Jesus loved. Didn't he? Yeah. I know. He had a lot of audacity. He, like, he, he got the message, though, didn't he? He put his, you know, he may have been a youngster, but I don't know that it matters compared to eternity. We're all youngsters. Um, to lay his, his head on Jesus' breast at, at, the, at the Last Supper. John. I, we need to all step into John's shoes and say along with him, how great is the love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. We, through the Lord Jesus Christ, bloodshed that opened the way into the throne room for us. It doesn't have to be a throne room. We can sit on Daddy's lap. How great the love. This session is on our greatest security. Oh, my children would wake up in the night and cry. I mean, they wanted arms around them for security. We need to hear the voice of the one we love. We need to feel their arms. And that gives us such security, doesn't it? Just to be held. Our greatest security is coming to know and coming to dwell and be aware of the Father heart of God, experiencing his love. Now, Sandy thinks she got the tired session. Uh-uh. I think now's the tired session or a few naps going on during our break. <laughs> and here's the thing. I can, I can list all the reasons why I know David loves me. I can make a book of it, or at least a card, you know. We can... <laughs> See, the are half asleep. It took them a while to get that. No. And I can talk about it. And you have got in, your, uh, in front of you an amazing set of notes talking about Father's love. We've got pages and pages, and, and what we, you know, with us, what's standing in our way of receiving the Father's love, they're amazing notes. You know what? This session, you don't have to wake up. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. 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 So we have a great deal in your notes that is absolutely amazing need to understand that we are, you know, I'm going to go through, I'm not going to go through. You know what I'm going to do with us? We've had a lot of notes today. What I want to do in this session is just give ourselves time, like on a first date, although we're well into it. What did we do with our beloved? as we got to know them. We spent time. We sat across the table, or maybe shoulder to shoulder, held hands, looked into each other's eyes, and just listened. Just took the time to reflect on, wow, you have beautiful eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm? So what I want to do in this session is for you to relax a little bit, for us to take a few moments. I'm going to put some music on, and I want us to reflect on the, fa on the fact that, you know, back to the verse I, I read at the very beginning, that John understood how great the love the Father has lavished, lavished upon us. How great the love. 
how great is the love God has lavished upon me that I should be called a child of God. And this is the truth of who we are. During this next while, we're going to put on some soaking music. This is called soaking. At one point in, the, in our time together, I will read from the scriptures, just scriptures over you. And I want us to enjoy this time. Though it be uncomfortable, enjoy this time. If you do need to lie down, Mike, Enjoy this time. There's also some spots up here that nobody's looking. Move if you need to. If you need to stand and just, just let them hug you, there's an altar space that you can do that. If, if they know, if they can't feel this heart's connection, you could read some of the verses mm -hmm. of the Father's love and then reflect on them. Yeah. Okay. That we just want to, you know, our busy lives. If I'm at home, I don't do this because there's dust bunnies and other things in the house that need chasing. <laughs> but today, we've cleared away everything else. You have nothing else to do now. You don't need to do grocery lists. If you absolutely must, jot it down quick, put down your pen. <laughs> because this is the time when we're just going to let the music, let the Holy Spirit, come together and reflect on the fact that how great is the love lavished upon us. That all that we have looked at, all this freedom is ours. God loves us.
woven through the Word of God between Genesis and Revelation, God has written a love letter to us. I want to read that. This is the Father's love letter, every word from the Word of God. My child, you may not know me, but I know everything about you. I know when you sit down and when you rise up. I am familiar with all your ways. Even the very hairs on your head are numbered. For you were made in my image. In me you live and move and have your being. For you are my offspring. I knew you even before you were conceived. I chose you when I planned creation. You were not a mistake for all your days are written in my book. I determined the exact time of your birth and where you would live. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I knit you together in your mother's womb and brought you forth on the day you were born. I have been misrepresented by those who don't know me. I am not distant and angry, but am the complete expression of love. And it is my desire to lavish my love on you simply because you are my child and I am your father. I offer you more than your earthly father ever could, for I am the perfect father. Every good gift that you receive comes from my hand, for I am your provider and I meet all your needs. My plan for your future has always been filled with hope. Because I love you, with an everlasting love. My thoughts toward you are as countless as the sand on the seashore, and I rejoice over you with singing. I will never stop doing good to you, for you are my treasured possession. I desire to establish you with all my heart and all my soul and I want to show you great and marvelous things. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Delight in me, and I will give you the desires of your heart, for it is I who gave you those desires. I am able to do more for you than you could possibly imagine for I am your greatest encourager. I am also the Father who comforts you in all your troubles. When you are brokenhearted, I am close to you. As a shepherd carries a lamb, I have carried you close to my heart. And one day I will wipe away every tear from your eyes and I'll take away all the pain you have suffered on this earth. For I am your father, and I love you, even as I love my son, Jesus. For in Jesus, my love for you is revealed. He is the exact representation of my being. He came to demonstrate that I am for you, not against you, and to tell you that I am not counting your sins. 
Jesus died so that you and I could be reconciled. His death was the ultimate expression of my love for you. I gave up everything I loved that I might gain your love. If you receive the gift of my son Jesus, you receive me, and nothing will ever separate you from my love again. Come home and I'll throw the biggest party heaven has ever seen. I have always been father and will always be father. The question is, will you be my child? I am waiting for you. Love, your dad, the almighty God. <laughs> Praise God. Lord God, we thank you that you speak to us in the heavens above, in the stars at night, in the moon that brings us light, in the sureness of the sun rising every day. In this world around us, in nature, you demonstrate your love to us constantly, consistently. And you've put it in writing and sealed it with the signature of the blood of Christ. And we thank you. Oh. say hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Mm. Ah. Lord, your love. Ah, it gives well, your love, it gives my feet a place to stand where I don't feel I'm going to fall away. Thank you, Lord God, that you're my firm foundation for my life, that I don't have to be afraid of being swept away, that you've given me a safe place to stand. Oh, oh. And Lord, you reminded me of when I was like four or five, I put on all the dress-up clothes and I made my daddy watch me dance. <laughs> and he did. And I thank you, Father God, that your love is so great that I can be me. And you're happy about it. I don't have to be ashamed that I'm who I am, where I am, and that when I was five, I could put on weird clothes and dance and spin. So Lord, I just thank you for your your word that says you joy over me, that you are delighted. I thank you for the security that gives me, for the sense of well-being. I thank you for the chance to have fun and be silly and be serious.
I just sense, keep your eyes closed, keep your heart before the Lord. You know, the Bible says, to as many as received him, he gave the right to be children of God. And I think everyone in this room has received him and what he's done for us. But have you ever said specifically, Lord, I receive your love? Because I believe that those who say, I receive your love, they have the right to experience, not just receive his love, but to daily experience the fullness of that love. So if you've never done it before, just say that. Say, Lord, right now I receive. I receive your love. Pour it afresh into my heart. And let me feel your love today and every day. Now just take a minute and let that happen. Receive the tangible touch of his love. Yes, Lord. Lord God, thank you. Thank you for this time. Father, stir our hearts that we would continue to pursue you more and more. I ask, Lord, that you would give me and each one of us here a fuller revelation of your love for us that you would continue to grow our understanding of your love, your desire for intimacy, that you will continue to reveal yourself in new and wonderful and fresh 
ways to us, that we would have a passion to get to know you, not just more, but more and more, that we would come to know you with every fiber of our beings, and that we would have the boldness and the confidence and the assurance of your love that we would pursue you to deeper and deeper places in our lives, that we would pursue you deeper and deeper into a revelation of yourself. Father, we know we need your help for that. I lay bare my heart and ask that where I am fearful of intimacy, you by your Holy Spirit would touch me and allow me to grow more and more bold and more and more open with you. That, Lord, where I have experienced rejection in my past, that that would melt away and that I would become totally convinced of your acceptance of me in every deep place. I pray too, Lord God, that you would accept me in my belief and have mercy on my unbelief, that through knowing you, that I would become more and more convinced that neither death nor life or angels or demons or anything that's happening now or in the future, that anything that exists that can separate me from your love. And I pray, Lord God, that you would grow me up in my understanding of your word, grow my mind that there would be no ignorant place in me, but that I would understand you with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. Lord God, also, should there be any anger or resentment that I have held against you or another, that this would melt away so that, Father, there would be no barrier standing between ourselves. And Lord, open the eyes of my heart that I will see past any man-made instructions, laws, restrictions, or legalisms that have made you into someone that you are not. That when I come into your presence, I would be free of these preconceptions and that I would truly see you as you truly are. Lord, fill us, fill us with your Father's love. Open our eyes that we can see as you do. Open our hearts. Pour in. And we thank you, Lord. And now we have time for one last kiss. It's like those dates that when we were first, never first together, you never wanted to leave, right? <laughs> but we don't have to. Allow the Lord to go with you. Walk daily in his love. And know that these sweet moments of just us together are only a moment away. So Lord, we thank you for this time. Just wow, and wow, you're awesome.